Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, get out your King James Bibles. We will be going along in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to do a little bit of um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a portion of that one too. But today's just a Bible reading by the pond. The pond's right over there. <laughs> So, uh, this is our Bible reading by the pond. Before we get started, Brothers Says Christ, um, I want to say that thank you for the prayers for the garden. The garden's looking great. The chickens are doing great. I've got uh, five of the little hens that are getting big now. They're teenagers, and they're doing pretty good. And then one of the white hens was set on some eggs and hatched them, and now we've got four, four more baby chicks going. So, we've got lots of hens back there going. And... Um, the hens are doing great, so thank you for the prayers, Brother and Sister Christ. Prayers. Um, I got a prayer request. You got a prayer request, Brother Sister Christ? Please, please understand when I say what I say and how I say it, Brother and Sister Christ. For those who truly love this ministry and truly love me as a brother or sister in Christ, the reason I have to say that is, Brother Sister Christ, how many times have you had someone come by and say, How are you? And they keep walking. They say, How are you? And they keep walking. And you're like, Ah. And you watch them walk right past you. It's like, what happened? That question has become a salutation. And it seems today, Brother Says Christ, we all, we all, including this man right here, we all need to check ourselves to see if when we say we love you, we actually mean it. Or is it just some kind of way of salutation, a way of saying hello and goodbye to the brethren? Oh, I love you, brother. I'm praying for you, brother. I've had so many brethren that, not so many, but I've had a lot in my uh, nine and a half going on ten years of being saved I've had a lot of brethren say I love you and I'm praying for you and uh, just all, all of a sudden just like that they're gone just like that they turn on you just like that they want nothing to do with you I'm like but what happened to I love you brother I'm praying for you brother and don't get me wrong brother Shrice, you might have to kick some brethren out because they're getting into the world and they're getting worldly and they're getting into sins that a you don't want anything to do with those sins but maybe the sin they're getting into I, you know, I've broken fellowship with brethren over Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games because I know my, I know my limit. I know my addictions. That's one of my major addictions. I can't have anything to do with it. And if they won't give it up so we can fellowship, I can't have anything to do with them. You know, I understand you have to put people out, but the Bible says you're still to treat them like a brother in Christ. You're still to pray for them. And you're still to love them as a brother in Christ. So sorry to go off a little bit, but it just seems today that I've had brethren just turn on me like that. And it's like, what happened to I love you, brother? I'm praying for you, brother. I'm here for you, brother. Wow. Um, you say, what brings this all up, brother? What's got you like this? Well, first let's get to the prayer request. The prayer request is very important, brother says Christ. So please, if you love this ministry, truly love this ministry, and you support this ministry with prayer, Okay, I've had brethren once again try to hit me up say, can't we donate? And I said, listen, God has provided for me food and raiment. I'm learning to be content. I don't want to wind up like these Bible building people or some of these other men on here on YouTube where they're living their dream life and just living it up on the brethren's dime. If God has provided food and raiment for me, I need to be content, and I am. I don't need donations, Brother Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you for the offer. I thank you for the offer. You know what you can do? Is try to help a brother or sister in Christ out that's hurting financially. Okay. I don't want to get off on it too much, Brother Jesus Christ. A whole nother study about uh, how donations are supposed to be working today. There's not supposed to be a 10% tithe. There's no Babel building in the New Testament where you're supposed to be donating to take care of a temple made with man's hands and the Levitical priesthood. That's in the Old Testament. That's why there's a 10% tithe in the Old Testament. Today, everyone that gets saved, you are the priesthood of the believer. Your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. How do donations supposed to work? Money is supposed to go into a pool. And that pool of money is supposed to go back out to the brethren as they have need. Do you see that a lot in these Babel buildings or these so-called online ministries that are just taking lots of money from people? No, you don't. Brother says, Christ, if you are really got some extra money and you really want to help, uh, try to buy some gospel tracts and try to lay them out when you go to town. Okay? Um, Buy Bibles for people, which is getting into my prayer request. Buy Bibles for people. I have a serious prayer request. I've got another set of Bibles that I'm going to be shipping overseas to some brethren overseas. Please, please, brothers and Christ, pray that they get in the right hands. What I mean by the right hands, hands that will read them and use them. That they don't just go on the shelf 
like with some brethren, they go on the shelf and start collecting dust, and you got to dust them off every so often. That they get used, that the people that these Bibles go in their hands, that they hide God's Word in their heart and they live it. Okay? Pray for that. Please, please pray for that. But brethren, you can also, like I said, you can help brethren out. I know some brethren can try to take... Today, Lord, brothers says Christ, the scary part about just giving money to people is whether they're going to take you for granted. But here's the thing, brothers says Christ. It's your heart that matters. Where your heart is. Is your heart in the attitude of, hey, I want to help brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm here for brothers and sisters in Christ. If you need help and God's blessed me, I want to help you. If they take advantage of you, don't help them again. Okay? If they didn't really need help and they're using you, but you've gave them money. I've given money to and tracks to uh, homeless. Okay? And they burn me. And I'm like, okay, I'll give them a track again, but I ain't giving them money again. Okay? By all means, don't give them money again. But you need to have the attitude of giving and helping out the brothers and sisters in Christ. If that's really what your God's laid on your heart, brothers and Christ. Sorry to go off on that a little bit, but brothers and sisters Christ, we need to be helping one another with prayer, spiritually with prayer and fellowship, exhorting one another, brothers and sisters Christ, and we need to be helping one another physically and financially. Okay, that's why I wish I had some brethren around here. Hey, he's he's mowing his lawn and it's, it's, he's having a hard time because of his knees. I go over and help him. He's building a fence. I'll go over and help him. Okay. Uh, I'm doing something here, and he knows what he's doing. He wants to come help me. We work together, and we help one another else, help one another out physically, and we're in good company. We're in very good company. Okay? I zoomed out a little bit because I wanted you to see the mountainside. I cut two trees down here, just real quick. Sorry, brother. I cut two trees down and opened up the view a little bit. Praise God. God is very good. We got some fog going. You can't see it here, but over there, there's still some fog. But brothers and Christ, we can help each other out and be there for one another. Uh, a lot today, I'm just saying, brothers and Christ, today it just seems like it's so easy to just throw money at something. Throw money at a ministry and then they can take care of it. Oh, they can take care of it. They can do all the reading for me. They can do all the studying for me. And thus save them. Now I'm part of that club and I'm part of them. And uh, You know what it takes a lot of courage and a lot of effort is to actually go out of your way to help brethren. You know, that's what, that's what charity is, self-sacrifice, charity, going out of your way to actually you doing the work to help brothers and sisters in Christ out, taking the time to pray for them, taking the time to help them, taking the time to talk to them when they're down, okay, being there for the brethren. Okay? It's easy, to, in these days, it's easy just to throw money at something, at a ministry or throw money at people, but it takes a lot more heart to actually be there to take care of them and help them spiritually and, fi and physically. Right. So, we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And the reason I chose this, because it starts out with, if you've got your King James Bibles open, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Okay, Babes in Christ. This is Paul. Now, before we get into this, I want to make a few points. Um... I butted heads with the brother of Christ recently because he was turning his back on the order of authority that God has in the Bible. God, man, woman, child. You can even throw animals at the very bottom because we're caretakers of everything that God has created. We're caretakers. But it's God, man, woman, child. We have a study on this on, on this channel. Okay? We started butting heads because before he got married, he believed what the Bible taught. After he got married, he changed his mind. And he goes against that teaching. Okay, women can usurp the authority of men. Women can be in offices in the Bible that the Bible says is just for men. And he's totally turned his back on the Word of God after he got married. Now, I'm, I'm not going to get into this too much, but I'm, I'm trying to reach him for the truth, and I'm trying to show him truth, and I'm trying to answer his questions. And one of the things he accused me of, because I'll give credit where credit's due, brothers and Christ, I give credit to uh, Peter Ruckman. If he had a good saying or uh, an example, in other words, of a Bible verse and given a good worldly uh, uh, life experience example, a testimony, or a 33rd book, and sometimes, uh, I don't do it much recently, but sometimes I still give Brian Denlinger credit where credit's due. Um, but I'm going through the minute. I've learned from Peter Ruckman, Sam Gipp, David Daniels, 33rd book, the brother does 33rd book, and Brian Denlinger. I learned from five people as a babe in Christ. What did we just read there? 
And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as in spiritual, but as in the carnal, even as in babes to Christ. I got accused of being a follower of men. You're just a follower of men. And what I was doing when I was trying to correct the brother, I was showing him, he was bringing up scripture after scripture, and I was trying to show him, hey, you're getting it wrong. Here's why. And let me compare scripture with scripture and scripture. And every once in a while, I threw in an example that a brother in Christ taught me. Okay? And this brother in Christ, he's got it stuck in his head that he can go it alone, and he can learn all on his own. He doesn't need no other man. Now, we're going to read here that you can take it too far and be a respecter of persons. We've got to study on that too, respecter of persons. Order of authority in, uh, in the Bible. We have this great Bible study God blessed me with, uh, respecter of persons. Okay? You can take it too far, but you can also take it too far on the other side where you're saying, I don't need nobody. I, I mean, ultimately, if we're in hard times, brothers and sisters Christ, you don't need nobody. You've got the Word of God. You've got the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's true. But we're not in those hard, hard times yet. It seems like we're getting closer and closer. But when I was a babe in Christ and I was newly saved, I learned from men of God. Okay? I learned from these five men. Now today, today, I've learned that I see that there's some, some problems with these five men. But guess what? Someone can watch me and say, hey, here's some problems with you. And I'm trying to take correction. I'm trying in my life, not just the ministry, but in my life. Say, okay, I need to do this better. I need to change this. I need to get this out of my life. But these five men taught me, brothers and Christ, I'm not a one-man show as far as when I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I can learn everything on my own. I can do it on my own. I don't need nobody. Well, brothers and Christ, what did Paul say? Be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Paul said, uh, follow the traditions basically that he laid and that you have us for an example. You can have Bible, good biblical godly traditions versus traditions of men and you need to separate the two. And today it's so hard because everything gets meshed together like it's all traditions of God. No, a lot of it's traditions of men. The Bible buildings and everything, traditions of men. Okay. But Paul is the one who told Timothy that you're supposed to raise up men that are able to teach others also. Okay? I always weary, Brother Jesus Christ, of coming across a man that never learned from anybody, and now they're trying to be out there, and they're trying to be a preacher, they're trying to be a teacher, okay, a pastor, but they never learned the Word of God from Bible-believing, God-fearing men. They didn't learn from anybody. They, they're self-taught. I'd be weary of those. I really will. Every one of those five men that I mentioned, they're not self-taught either. And they're not self-taught at all. They learn from men of God in their time. Okay, That's how it's supposed to be, Brother Jesus Christ. I don't know if you can hear the donkeys. One of the neighbors bought some donkeys. But Brother Jesus Christ, that's not how it's supposed to be. Right? We are not supposed to be self-taught and going alone. I don't like being in ministry by myself, but in these last days... Uh, what do I do? Just do nothing? Well, I'm going to keep doing this until gr men of God that actually want to line up with the Bible want to work together. I'll work together with men of God. You know? But my thing is, Brother Christ, don't take it to the ex extreme one way and say, hey, I don't need nobody. And then don't take it in the extreme the other way where you pick one man. I I'm of that man. And that's what we're going to get into here. Okay? And this brother, he just has this attitude that I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. I can learn everything on my own. I don't need nobody. Okay? Just don't take it to that extreme. Please. And I, brethren, would not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk. When someone gets saved and born again, brother says Christ, I, got I started out with milk. The Bible version issue led me to the gospel, the true plan of salvation. I got saved, and I started doing milk, um, the, the, going over the gospel in more detail. You know, learning more about what entailed in the gospel, uh, what happened to Jesus Christ, why it happened, you know, about the Old Testament, the animal sacrifices, and Jesus is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, you get into it a little bit more. I got into dispensational teaching, that's milk. Uh, eternal security, sealed into the day of redemption, that's milk. Um, uh, the Godhead. Okay, the Godhead, can, uh, you can teach it in a way where it's milk at first, but it's very simple. The Godhead is simple. It's God the Father and the person of Jesus Christ. That's the Godhead. So simple. 
Okay, Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit. His soul is God the Father, his spirit's the Holy Spirit. You have God the Father, the soul, the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit, and the body, which is the Son of God, capital S, Son of God. Right? Those are three parts to a person that's in Jesus Christ. But if you want to get into a really hardcore, then you start getting in some meat. But you can teach a little bit of the milk side of the Godhead. Uh, the t uh, pre time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. You can do a side that's milk on all this stuff. You can do a side that's milk that's just for, you know, babes in Christ getting started. And then if you really want to get into some of these touch teachings a little bit more, you can get into some meat, some really good meat. But I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Why? When it comes to someone who's say, uh, newly saved or they're acting like they're newly saved. I've come across brethren that's like, so how long have you been saved? I asked them that because it seems like they've only been saved for a few months. And they're like, oh, I've been saved for 10 years. I was like, but you don't act like it. You don't act like it. Okay. Brother says Christ, when a brother gets lost, you got to go back to milk. It's just that simple. Okay. you got to go back to milk. For I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto we were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Okay. And real quick, if I forgot to say it, Brother Christ, the reason we're going through this is because I was accused of being a follower of persons and not following the Bible. So we're going to go through the Bible, and this is for, for me to remind me who I'm supposed to be following. Okay? Who's in charge? Like I said, we can we can learn from great men of God, but ultimately, who am I following? Verse three: For ye are yet carnal. For as there is among you envying and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? What does he mean by ye are carnal? Because people get on to me. Romans chapter eight: carnally minded, walking after the flesh. Remember, there's carnally minded, walking after the flesh, and then there's spiritually minded and struggling with the flesh. But spiritually minded, walking after the spirit. But struggling with the flesh. Remember, when we get saved, we start struggling with the flesh. There's a war going on between the flesh and the soul and the spirit. There's a war. But what is he saying here? You guys are acting like the lost world. Yeah, you're acting like lost people. Verse 4. Why one say I'm of Paul and another I'm of Paulus, are ye ought not carnal? That's how the lost world acts. They get in their little cliques and I'm of so and so and I'm of so and so and you look around at all these false religions and a lot of these you know, groups, people always want to form a group, and they want to form a group around a person, okay? And that person ain't Jesus Christ. Because here it's not talking about Jesus Christ, it's talking about Paul and Apollos. Are you not carnal? That's what lost people do. We're not supposed to be like them. Verse 5, Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed? Brian Denlinger led me to Christ. He did. I give credit where credit's due. He taught me a lot about the Bible. Do I believe he's gone a little bit, he's gone the way of the world? Absolutely. His pride is out of control? Absolutely. I haven't watched him in a year. Maybe he's gotten better. Maybe he's gotten better. I haven't watched him in a year, but, um, but I'm going to give credit where credit's due. This is talking about Apollos and Apollos by ministers whom believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. You can get led to Christ by a man, and all of a sudden you can start falling into the trap of thinking, now you owe that man everything. No, you don't. You owe Jesus Christ everything. Jesus Christ saved me. But that brother showed me the truth. Brother Brian showed me the truth. Brian Denlinger, if you don't know who he is, he showed me the truth. He showed me the Bible version issue. Then I started learning the Bible version issue from Sam Gipp and David Daniels. Then he started teaching me, after I got saved, he started teaching me the Word. I started learning the Word from him and uh, 33rd book and Peter Ruckman. But you don't, you, you can fall into the trap of thinking you owe them everything. Because he led me to Christ, I owe him. Even when he's wrong, I owe him to keep my mouth shut. And even when he's teaching heresy, i got to keep my mouth shut. Because I owe him, I owe him. You don't owe him. You owe the Lord, Jesus Christ, everything. You're to honor him. How do you correct people? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Not losing your temper. All right. Let's keep going. I have planted, talking about the gospel and the truth, when it comes to the truth. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Brothers says Christ, be careful and not become a respecter of persons. Please. Okay. 
Yes, honor that person. Show respect where respect is due, okay? Let the elders that rule well be worthy of double honor. Okay, honor them. But remember, you owe Jesus Christ everything. And remember that order of authority that this brother in Christ that I butted heads with is fighting. God comes first. God, man, woman, child. God comes first. He gets all the glory. He gets all the thanks. You know, in the Old Testament, they kept saying, uh, Joshua, Yahashua. They tried to say that they don't want to say Jesus Christ. So they'll say Yahashua, and they'll say, well, it's because Joshua saves. Joshua didn't save nobody. Who saved the Jewish people? Who brought the Jewish people into the promised land? God Almighty. They always talk about the laws of Moses, the laws of Moses. They're God's laws that he gave to Moses to give to the people. It's God's laws, but they won't say God's laws. It's Moses' laws. Joshua saves. Why is that? Because they have a serious problem here. Giving God all the glory. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Let that sink in, brother says Christ. We all are butting heads hardcore these last days. Why? Because brethren are not putting God first. They're not putting the word first. And we're going to get to a Bible study here in the next few days after this. Where we're going to be talking about who's on the throne and who's on the cross. They're letting other people be on the throne. They themselves are on the throne. But Jesus isn't on the throne. Amen. We're, they're one. We're supposed to be all one in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to be of the same mind, of the same judgment, striving together. But today we're butting heads. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Apollos. Well, do they line up with the Bible? Well, that doesn't matter because I'm with them and, and I have to go the direction they go because do they line up with the Bible? Are they comparing Scripture with Scripture? Are they changing the Bible? Are they correcting the Bible? We're going to be doing another study, Brothers Christ, called uh, the Yea Hath God Said Test. We're going to do a Yea Hath God Said Test. Do you have that disease? The Yea Hath God Said? A better rendering would be? And that's what's causing a lot of headbutting. People adding to and subtracting from the Word of God. Wrestling the Scriptures to their own destruction. Because they want what they want. They don't want it God's way. They want it their way. Now he that planteth and he that wore it Watereth are one. We're supposed to be working together. When someone over here preaches the gospel and someone over there preaches the gospel, if you got saved by the man on the left, it doesn't mean the man on the right is not what a part of us. All right, I'm of this man over here. No. Okay. One. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And we're going to get some more. Brothers and sisters Christ, don't worry about other men. What rewards they're getting and, and what they're doing to, to a point. If it's wickedness, reprove them. Correct them. If they're preaching heresies, reprove them. Correct them. But in the end, give them to God. They're God's servant. Just as I'm God's servant. You give them to God, God will deal with them. And when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ... I always say this, Brothers Christ, when you're standing before the judgment seat of Christ, let's say I'm standing before the judgment seat of Christ and Jesus goes, you were wrong here. And I'll be like, but no, 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 I couldn't be wrong because Brian said, Brian, 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 well, well, Peter Ruckman, uh, he said, what, where's Peter Ruckman? Oh. All you know, 33rd book. You say you're being a little sarcastic. Yeah, the point is, is no one else is going to be standing up there between, it's just going to be you and Jesus Christ. You, brother, sis, Christ, and Jesus Christ. And you have to answer for the life that you've lived as a Christian. And you can't use any of those five men that taught me. I got to a point when I was a babe in Christ. They led me. But you get to a point where you're not a babe anymore. You're not a novice. You're a mature Christian founded in the faith. And in the end, you're going to have to answer to Jesus Christ. Just you. I'm going to have to answer him. That's why I'm saying they're, they're God's servant. Give them to God, and God will deal with them. Okay. Just like God will deal with me. If we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbands be, ye are God's building. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. He's a wise master builder. Remember, Paul, I'm in the ministry of Paul. There is no my ministry apart from Paul. Paul said it was my ministry. A lot of men like to take that. Paul said it's my ministry, therefore I can say it's my ministry. Are you the apostle to the Gentiles? Hello? 
Are you the apostle to the Gentiles? No. Paul had a ministry that was given to him by God. His ministry, the gospel was for us today, is revealed to Paul. How we're supposed to live today as Gentiles being ad adopted, grafted in, we learn it from Paul, the Pauline epistles. He's a master builder. I am in the ministry of Paul. Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. People say, well, then we can just skip Paul and go straight to Christ. Uh, no, we're still supposed to go through Paul. A lot of people get messed up when they try to go to the Gospels and say, uh, I'm just going to listen to everything Jesus said and ignore Paul. Uh, no, no, no. Now, Paul did say, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, there's things that God said, a lot of things that God, Jesus Christ said, and the Gospels that we can learn from it. But be careful of going to the Gospels for doctrine for today. The doctrine for today was revealed to Paul. Okay, pr primarily. You can see it overlap in other books, but primarily is revealed to Paul. He's a master builder. Look, look at what he says here. I have laid the foundation. I have laid the foundation. And another buildeth thereon. He laid the foundation. Everyone else builds thereon. I'm part of Paul's ministry. Brother, they're in ministry. Are you part of Paul's ministry? Does your ministry line up with Paul? Paul's ministry? Or does your ministry start changing and becoming your own ministry and you're starting doing things your own way be careful of that but he has laid a foundation we're going to see what that foundation is another buildeth thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ what's the foundation paul laid jesus christ Let that sink in. Like I said, this person leads you to Christ. You don't owe them everything. Who do you owe? Jesus Christ. My life belongs to Him. He's my capital L Lord. He's my capital K King. He's my Master. I'm His servant. My job is to please Him. Right? That's why we were created. For thy pleasure they are and were created. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. I'm created to please God, not men. Now, you can please men. You can please your wife. You can please children. You can please men. But you're not to please them over God. They don't trump God. Ultimately, the foundation, remember he said, that another buildeth thereon? But the foundation is Jesus Christ and his perfect written word, the King James Bible. When you have men that start straying from the perfect written word, you need to stick with the word. Verse 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, good works that are based off the scriptures, wood, hay, stubble, those are the works, I believe, of the flesh. When the flesh get involved and you start straying from the word. Or you start perverting the word of God to justify the flesh, doing things the flesh's way, the world's way, Satan's way, the three enemies. Remember, brothers of Christ? The three enemies. Verse 13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Every man, like I said, when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, every man's a servant of God, and God will deal with his servants. You correct a brother in Christ, you try to rebuke him. If you have to break fellowship with him, then you break fellowship with him. But I still pray for everyone that I've ever come in contact with, brothers and sisters in Christ, other men in ministry that have turned on me. I still pray for them all. Right? I still pray for them. I'm still here for some of them that, that will let me be here for them. Okay? But the point is, is, they're all servants of Jesus Christ, and they're all going to have to answer to Jesus Christ someday. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, the life of a Christian. Not your lost life. You get saved, your lost life, get, God wipes the slate clean, you start all over, and now your life as a Christian, that's what you're going to be answering for at the judgment seat of Christ. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If a man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. What is that? That's the gold, silver, and precious stones. The works that please God because they, they line up with the Word of God. You want to know how to please God? This tells you right here how to please God. 
oh no no I can do my own thing and everything what happens when you start doing your own thing I can do my own thing and claim it pleases God I'm doing things the flesh's way the world's way Satan's way and I can still claim it I'm pleasing God I'm doing it for Jesus Christ where do those works go keep reading verse 15 if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss the wood hay and stubble but here's the here's the here's the grace the wonderful grace of God but he himself shall be saved yet so is by fire you're sealed into the day of redemption no matter how much you mess up brother says Christ it, you can't lose your salvation it belongs to God that being said brother says Christ if you're messing up right now you need to get your life right with God get your heart right with God line up with the book and start doing works that please God to get that precious stones the gold silver and precious stones okay time is running out I believe we could get called home any day now the catch way of the body of Christ can happen any day now but that to the side because a lot of brethren today are turning their backs on that they saying, oh no the day of Christ isn't at hand oh no we're not supposed to be looking for that blessed hope oh no Paul didn't say that he might might that he might I'll say it again that he might redeem us from this present wor evil world no 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 that's that Paul never said any of those things well let's let's do the other side he could call you home in death any day King David said there's but a step between me and death you can die any day for any reasons God can call you home at any time and death time's running out are you living for the Lord does he come first okay does he come first are you living for him is he the foundation are you falling in the trap of being a respecter of persons even if that respecter of persons is your wife with this brother that I was button heads with his wife is running him his wife is leading him All right. now brother says Christ anybody can believe I was I fell into respecter of persons where I had you know I was following a man that when he started going the wrong direction I kept my mouth shut and I didn't say nothing because I'm of him and if I had said something when it was small he might have listened now that he's really out of control he won't listen to anybody and I have some blame I have, I'll have to answer for some of that at the judgment seat of Christ why didn't you show true love for that brethren and correct him why'd you put him on such a high pedestal well we can't touch him he's on such a high pedestal we can't touch him right but back to this brother says Christ make sure you're doing works you can get called home at any time make sure you're living for Jesus Christ every day are you starting your day with the Word of God are you ending your day with the Word of God are you praying every day are you watching some Bible studies at least two or three times a week right when you go into town are you taking some buying some gospel tracks and going into town and dropping some gospel tracks off you don't have to be in a huge hardcore full-time ministry to be living a life of Christ are you starting your day with the Word of God and hiding it in your heart what you read you're hiding it in your heart and you're trying your best to live it do you fear God remember being in Christ Jesus being in Christ Jesus you are created uh, he's created you to be wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption are you looking for that blessed hope are you living every day as if Jesus could call you home tomorrow I need to get busy living for him today and living him for today doesn't mean you have to be out on the street corner with street signs screaming the gospel at the top of your lungs some men feel called to do that praise God but what it means is do you fear God are you hiding God's word in your heart and you fear him so when he says don't do this you try to get it out of your life when he says do this you try to make it part of your life some things you it's got to, you got to form a habit you know starting your day with the Word of God is a habit ending your day with the Word of God is a habit okay you got to get good habits forming okay? are you living for Jesus Christ fearing God righteousness are you being a good representation of Jesus Christ a servant of Jesus Christ are you setting a bad example for Jesus Christ Okay. sanctification getting the sin and wickedness out of your life or are you perverting the scriptures trying to uh, make ease your conscience to make you feel like oh, I am following the Bible when you're not okay. be careful okay. all works will be tried at the judgment seat of Christ your life as a Christian is going to be tried at the judgment seat of Christ and you won't be able to blame anyone but yourself for what you lose 
Yeah, but this person, did you not have a Bible? Do you not have the Holy Spirit in you? When this person's teaching stuff, are you following along in the Bible? Are you doing your own studies? Are you reading? Are you praying? Saying, God, show me the truth. This person lines up with the Bible, praise God, you give the Bible the glory. You give God the glory through His Word. A brother in Christ came up to me once and hit me up and said, Hey, you know what? You say Brian Denlinger says a lot. Just wanted you to know that. You say Brian Denlinger says a lot. And I, I was like, do I? And I sat down and I talked with the Lord for a while and said, yes. And the Lord's like, you need to be saying, thus saith the Lord, not thus saith Brian Denlinger. Okay. There's nothing wrong with me saying Brian Denlinger came up with a great uh, example, worldly uh, life experience in the world. Okay, not worldly, but life experience, a testimony. He has a great testimony. You can use the testimony he had. You can use a testimony Peter Ruckman had, uh, Sam Gibb, David Daniels. I'm going through all the five men that taught me. 33rd book, you can use a testimony they used, but when it comes to absolute truth, it's supposed to be, thus saith the Lord. If they line up with the Bible, then you say, praise God, thus saith the Lord. But a lot of people get trapped into saying, thus saith that man. And that's a bad attitude, because when that man's wrong, you're going to keep saying, thus saith that man. You're going to follow that man, you're not going to follow the Word of God. You're not going to follow Jesus Christ, the one true foundation. I've had problems with respect to persons. I have. So when someone calls and accuses me of being a respecter of persons, first thing I do is, I, even though I believe I'm not, because of this disagreement I had with this brother, he's 100% wrong according to the scriptures. And he once believed the truth, and he's turned from it. His own testimony. But I still have to sit back and say, Lord, am I? Because I care about pleasing God. I care. Even if it's just for a moment, brothers. If someone could accuse you of being so radical that you're like, that's just so false. But do you ever take time to spend a few minutes just saying, Hey, Lord, I got called this again by somebody. If it's a lost world, eh, who cares? But when it's coming from a brother in Christ, even if he's wrong, do you ever stop and go, Lord, am, am I falling back into being a respecter of persons? Am I? I don't want to. That's wrong. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Ye are the temple of God. Remember he said about the donations. Ye are the temple of God. Today, we're the priest of the believer. That's where donations go. They go into a pool. The elders have the pool of money. And the elders redistribute to the brethren as they have need. That's how it's supposed to be working today. And it's not. So, brothers, says Christ, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy so, brothers in Christ, if you want to help brethren, help brethren out. If you want to donate money, do it by helping brethren out. Do it with gospel tracts. Do it with Bibles. Do it with helping brethren out with food and raiment and maybe paying a bill or two. Okay? Use spiritual discernment in how you help brethren out. Please, by all means, yes. All right. But here's the thing. If a man defile the temple of God, this is what you need to focus on. God and His Word comes first. This is the life of a Christian. God and His Word comes first. Your walk with the Lord comes second. This temple comes second. Is it right with God? Yeah, but that brethren over here, his temple isn't right. You don't worry about that brother's temple until you got your temple in order. Right? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. This is the verse that we get. It's one of the strong verses that talk about Brother Christ when it talks about chastening of the Lord. That God will kill somebody and bring them home early. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. Sin is destructive to the flesh. It will destroy the flesh. It will shorten your lifespan. There's a lot of things in here I've been reading in the Old Testament, in Proverbs and Psalms, where it talks about like honoring your mother and father and thou have a long life. Uh, if you fear God, someone who truly fears God, he'll bless you with a long life, and so on. But it all has to do with pleasing God and doing things God's way. When you start getting into the world's way, the flesh's way, the world's way, Satan's way, it's going to shorten your lifespan. And you can get so bad as a Christian that God is willing to destroy you, destroy that temple, and bring you home early. Kill you and bring you home early. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. 
Let no man deceive himself. No, the Bible says that you shouldn't think highly, more highly than you ought to think of yourself. Getting puffed up, pride, vanity, I call it ego. But pride, vanity, envy. We're going to get into some of that. God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive you, man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. You know, there's some brethren that the ministry, they started getting so puffed up and so wise in this world. The world's wisdom. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. You say, well, what does that mean? Am I supposed to get lost again? No, you need to go back to the gospel. And I've said this plenty and plenty of times, brother, says Christ. When you see a brother or sister in Christ that's so messed up with the world, the world's wisdom, the flesh, doing things Satan's way, the only thing you can do is take him back to salvation. Why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, who it is that saved them, and who it is they belong to and they serve. You are bought with the price. You are not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. As well as your soul. You're not your own. You're bought with the price. Do you not remember who saved you? And who it is you're supposed to be serving? you got to go back to step one. Salvation. you got to take them back to treat them like they're babes in Christ. And get the milk. And the number one milk is what? The gospel. The gospel. That he may be wise. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. It's contrary to God. It goes against God. It's going to wreck your walk with the Lord. If you're a man in ministry, it's going to mess up your ministry. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever thou soweth, thou shalt ye also reap. We just read about the judgment seat of Christ. Oh no, Lord, but I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. Wood, hay, and stubble, all burnt up. Well, I did this for you. Uh, you perverted the word of God so you could have what you wanted. And that's not what God wanted. You can't deceive God to judge, when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ. Right now, brothers and sisters Christ, if it seems like people are getting away with things, brethren, trust the Lord. Like I said, they're His servant. God's dealing with them. You don't see everything that's going on in their life. Just like you don't see everything that's going on in my life. Trust the Lord. He will deal with them. And ultimately, everyone's going to have to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. Nobody's getting away with anything. This man ain't getting away with anything. Nobody is. Mm -hmm. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. I can pervert the scriptures a little bit. I can tweak the scriptures a little bit. I can wrestle the scriptures to my own destruction. I can add to and subtract... Verse 20, and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. When it comes to the world, all is vanity. Apart from God, all is vanity. Are you seeking to have man's wisdom? Or are you seeking God's wisdom by the whole, through his word by the Holy Ghost? Here is verse 21, therefore let no man glory in men. Let no man glory in men. I always try to tear, I don't try to hurt people's feelings or nothing, but when someone starts giving me glory, I put in the comment section and I revert that glory back to God where it belongs and say, hey, give God the glory. He saved me. He opened the scriptures to me. He gave me the courage to speak to the brethren and to be speak out about the truth and about the word of God. God called me into ministry. He's given me the courage and the strength to do the ministry. Give God the glory. There's some men that don't do that. They love the glory of men. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Let no man glory in men. Don't start man worshiping. People down here, respect their persons, and turn that person into a lowercase g God. Don't do that, brother says Christ. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, so doing our best to serve God. To love God, which is keeping His Word, and to serve God, taking His Word and putting it in action. The ministry of reconciliation. 
living a life of Christ. Or the world, the things that God blesses you with, He might bless some brethren more than others. Don't get into envy. Or life, or death. Death? Yeah, be absent from the, par uh, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Praise God for the brethren that are with our Lord and Savior right now. Or in life, praise, praise God for the brethren we still have here. Or things present, what God has us for today. Sometimes I get stuck in the past thinking how better it was in the past, and God's like, I don't have you in the past. I've got you in the present. Deal with the present and give me glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Or things to come, that blessed hope. Are you looking for it and praising God for it? And loving God's appearing? All are yours, and ye are Christ's. And Christ is God's. It always comes back to Jesus Christ. He's the foundation. Brother says Christ, He is the foundation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 2 says, Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Jesus is the foundation. We're to please God through Jesus Christ. We're to please Him. We have to have faith in His Word and doing things His way. I really don't want to do this, Lord. But the Lord says, that's what I want you to do. You say, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. Don't do this. When you start becoming a respecter of persons and that man starts going left or starts going right, what happens? Over here in chapter 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6, it says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Your glory is not good. You know not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Brother and sister Christ, the whole lump. So I got accused of being a respecter of persons. I'm going through the Bible saying, Lord, am I really being a respecter of persons or am I standing for your word? No, I'm standing for God's word in this case. There is no, this is a whole other study. We've already done it. You can go watch the study. Order of authority. God, man, woman, child. Okay. Uh, I need to do a study on priorities. Priorities. God and his word comes first when it comes to priorities. Uh, his word comes first. Your walk with the Lord comes second. If you're a man in ministry, the ministry comes third. Then the lost world, I mean, then saved brothers and sisters in Christ, then the lost world. If you're not in, called into ministry, that's fine. It's okay. All you do is you take that part out. Okay? We're all called in the ministry of reconciliation, so you can still leave it in, the ministry of reconciliation. But what I mean by the ministry, I'm talking about men who are called into full-time ministry. They claim they're in full, they're called into full-time ministry. Okay? That ministry needs to come first before the world. Okay? Before the brethren, you need to make sure you're doing the ministry God's way and that the ministry is a life calling, it's not a business. And that your wife's not getting in the way, your children aren't getting in the way, neighbors aren't getting in the way, family aren't getting in the way, brethren that are going the wrong direction aren't getting in the way. The ministry needs to come third. But remember, God and His Word comes first, order of authority. Then your walk with God, how you're taking His Word and applying it to your life and living it, that comes second. Then the ministry, ministry of reconciliation for, most, almost all, for all the brethren. And if you're blessed with being called into full-time ministry or a, a, a more like being a teacher in some of the offices that the Bible talks about for men, offices, one of them is a teacher, uh, a pastor, okay, and so on. That comes third. Brothers and sisters, Christ come forth. The lost world comes last. All right. That's the order of priority. And brother said, I want to do a study on that eventually someday, but remember the order of priority. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to end it with this. I'm just going to do a reading. Okay. Brother says, Christ, please, please don't be a respecter of persons, but don't go to the reverse where you don't have any men that taught you anything. I'm self-taught. I do everything on my own. Uh, we're supposed to be working together and striving together. And God calls certain men to be teachers, some men to be preachers, pastors, bishops, deacons, like ordained elders. Hey, brother, say, there's a reason for that. We are supposed to learn from men. But ultimately, who's the ultimate foundation? We just read about that. Ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Jesus Christ is the ultimate foundation. This is number one. Right. Okay. Verse 14 in 1 Thessalonians 5. 
Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, patient towards all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Give God thanks in everything. Give Him the glory in everything. 19. Quench not the Spirit. Remember, you quench the Spirit when you, when, when you start doubting your salvation too much. It's okay to doubt your salvation when you're newly saved. My, my, my life was a wreck. I know I said I was just going to read it, but i got to say, my life was a wreck. And there was times I doubted my salvation, but you need to get to a point where you're a mature, mature solid Christian on a firm foundation, and you stop quenching the Spirit. I'm saved, I'm sealed into the day of redemption, I belong to God, and I need to get busy living for Him and serving Him. Verse 20, despise not prophesying that blessed hope. Despise not prophesying. When you preach the gospel, are you warning people about hell, where they're heading, where they're going to end up someday if they die without Jesus Christ? His blood washing their sins away. Some people get mad saying, you shouldn't mention hell when you preach the gospel. Those people aren't leading anybody to, to salvation, to Jesus Christ. Verse 21, prove all things. There it is again. Examine whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Prove all things, brothers and Christ. Prove all things. Today we're going off of just word of mouth all the time. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. This right here. The word of God. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That blessed hope. I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you, brothers and Christ, in these last days. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for listening. I hope this has exhorted you and lifted you and gets you to get back on the right path. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next study.